quit nine years ago. And he hired back in. And he wants to be in the union, but he's on probation for three months. Well, they've got him to where he owes dues for the probation period. And, uh, we've had this problem before with the new hires and others. We need to get this, this issue clarified to where we can tell these people something definite. I mean, this man has a point. This is the man here. Oh, right. this is the brother here. Well, maybe Roy or BJ, would you like to come and... Uh... We've, we've talked about it. We had not gained any uh, firm conclusion yet. He's not the only one I've got out there in that situation, BJ. I've got, I don't know, two or three or four out there in the same situation. And, and, and really, they're, they're, they're union men, you know, they won't. But like I say, someone didn't get a hold of them when they came in. And technically speaking, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't have any protection whatsoever. They'd just be paying, they would just be paying that probationary period for nothing, you might say. And uh, it's, it's a problem we got out there with the people, and they say, man, you know, we shouldn't have to pay that if we quit before and come back in. And they, they understand that if they were recalled off the layoff, yeah, it would be right, you know. But, Due to the situation like they were in, well, they, they don't think that they should have to pay that. These people came back to work at Vault over here after they quit and been gone 12 years. And they left this company, this union, in good standing paying dues. When they come back to work, they work 40 hours in a month, the company would take dues out of their check. They'd pick them right back up just like they were, because they are still a union member, in good standing, when they left. But then, would I be protected under the union? Yes, sir. Even during my probation? Sure. Well, well, if he's on probation, how, 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 how well, would he be protected? Well, if they go and say, hey, man, you ain't doing your probation, and we don't need you. They can do that. Yeah, they can do that, sure. Sure. That's, the, that's, the, that's the 90 days. Sure. It's not a question of whether being a union member is going to protect you from anything the company wants to do by itself. They can walk off to each and every one of you today and fire you because there's no contract. That's what we've been fighting for, a due process procedure in the agreement. All of the people who have been fired have not had anything. They haven't been to a point where the company has listened to any argument whatsoever. And some of those discharges now go back to what, 10 months? 10, almost 11 months. And because no due process exists. So it's, it's an individual's own call on whether they want to join the union. But if they join the union, they owe union dues. Because they're deciding which side they're on when they join the union. And, and like everyone else, they should pay their union dues. If you don't pay their union dues, nothing comes down out of the sky and hits you on the head. You just are considered to be delinquent. In other words, you're not carrying your load. You say there is no check off, there's no due check on, and these new hires come back in, or rehires come back in. You say we don't have a contract. If there's no contract, then what says these people coming back in are members when they come back in until they sign another card? They're not members when they come back in until. That, uh, and look, well, wait a minute, if they were laid off. No, sir, I said no, rehires. No, no, they're not members. They're not members until they show up at this union hall, either in the form of a, green, a signed card or with a withdrawal card that reinstates them. All right. You are not automatically, I, I don't mean to create a conflict between Carol and I, if you're laid off and recalled for some right. reason. We understand that. Yeah. Okay. If you yeah. left of your own choice or the company, you exceeded your seniority for recall purposes and you, you lost your time and you came back as a new hire, if you have a, an honorable withdrawal card from 848 or anywhere else in the UAW, all you have to do is walk in over here and you're automatically reinstated, aren't you? Just turn it in and you sign up again. If you don't, you sign up a new card and you become a member again. Now, if you become a member, you have an obligation at that point to pay dues, whether you want to take it if you don't take it seriously in the absence of checkoff, that's, that's what we were talking about here. That's
they're not realizing the people that are coming to the union with the problems that that we can't do anything about are not realizing that we're not all powerful, especially without a contract. That's true. And maybe that's something we should tell them. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Down the 757 fixed trailing edge, they've got a cost problem on there, and they want to get me involved worrying about it. I've been in Bledsaw's office. I turn in zero every day this week, working WPs as a lead man. Before we come out and shipping, got me off the job, said, come on, let's go back go in the office. Let's all give him instructions for me and him to meet in the morning and we'd assign the people a certain load to do. If they didn't do it, start giving white slips. I told him I couldn't make it in the morning, I'd see him Friday. All right. <laughs> and I told my people, I told them, I told them do the job right. They've got a cost problem here and they're trying to get you to jump and rip and run, and they got a party on work machine to hold their hands and hire a couple of these six and a half an hour or something. Sure enough today, he called one of my people in there and eat him out and told him he wasn't worth two cents. He didn't do anything on the 747. He wasn't even halfway doing his job over there. He got excited and come out there and grabbed up and put a quarter inch router bit where it should have been a 316. <laughs> sure, no got it. I, he said, hey, something's wrong. I said, I told you not to get in no hurry to watch what you're doing because that's what he wants. And I told him, since he's not there tomorrow, if anything takes place, get your union steer. Because that's all. He's getting nasty, just like I spent 24 hours this week, every day this week, working WTs. He said, I notice you put in, you claim two of these WTs, one each day. I said, that's right. I hope the holes up for a faster. I had another WT on down the line. Next day, I went ahead and installed, completed that WT. He said, I'll tell you one thing. He said, I hope you're about done. <laughs> I said, hey. I said, I said, I said, I said, I've got one more WT left. I'm having a part made up. I've got a machine, a mill pad off and replace it. He said, machine it off. He said, how come a machinist hadn't been doing that? I said, you tell me. And he said, all I'm asking is for eight hours. I said, good. That sounds like a winner. <laughs> That's it. But don't be surprised. Folks are working real hard out there. We got two or three that's not here tonight. They had other commitments. Yeah. But they're working hard when they're, while good. they're out there. That's good. <laughs>
Anyone got anything else? Joe? Um, they, they've uh, kept you long enough. I just want to tell you that your efforts, and it's basically the same people. There's some new people here. We appreciate y'all. Keep up the good fight. You, you people, I told you last time that you'd collected 595 months in back dues. Better than that, you have, as best we can ascertain, brought 168 members up to date. More than we have. So give yourselves a hand again and keep up the good fight. What's your name? Tim Birch. Tim, how long have you been out at the LTV? Uh, eight years. And what did you do out there? I was associated with the paint shop and the quality part at the Marshall Street facility. Did you hold any kind of a union position? At the time I was fired, I was an elected union steward and I was currently the acting shop committeeman for Tommy Falcons while they were in contract negotiations. And what date were you fired? February 28th of 1984. Wasn't that prior to the uh, con expiration of the contract? Yes, that was just prior to the expiration of the contract, the last one we had. So that must have made you probably one of the first fired? Yeah, I was the first one fired before anything happened to do with this contract struggle. What did they fire you for? Well, the way it was listed was returning late from lunch and misuse of company time, but in actuality, I was allegedly supposed to have put out a paper that let the people know just how contract negotiations were going. And, you know, but that's, they say it was returning late from lunch, but I was coming back from the union hall and I was instructed that I would not be going to the union hall as an elected official or anything else on company time. And so that's the way they listed it. They terminated me for that reason. But this wasn't this, this normal procedure that uh, an acting uh, shop uh, committeeman was allowed to. Uh, yes, sir. And a, a shop committeeman or a steward, for justified reasons, could leave for union business and go to the union hall. You know, leave the plant, go to the union hall, and come back. But that wasn't true in my case because after that first paper was put out, letting the people know what they might lose or stand to lose. Well, then, you know, naturally the pressure was on me, and, you know, that was the only type of disciplinary problem I'd ever had. And I'd never had a problem leaving the plant, going and taking care of union business up until then. But, you know, when that paper went out, you know, and they, you know, that I was allegedly supposed to have published, you know, that's what happened. What did the paper say? Well, it let them know, uh, it let them know briefly, you know, a, a breakdown of how contract negotiations were going, and, uh, you know, just briefly tell them about the cost of living wasn't going to be folded in and the insurance benefits were going to be cut and they were going to try on a two-tier wage scale. Just basically let them know early what the company was intended on doing, but they didn't think, they didn't want it back in the plant, but, you know, International was behind it as far as, you know, wanting the people to know what was going on and they just put it off on my shoulders.